You're listening to Podcast BXN, a video game podcast delivering player experience news. Let's go. What's up, guys? Welcome to Podcast PXN, episode 129. I am one of your hosts, Daniel Prindle, a.k.a. Dan is DTM on Twitter, and I am joined over Discord by the Nintendo aficionado, Roshan Warner, at Roro, the host of Large Popcorn, and video essayist, Christian Macias, at ISO Christian. And we are without the one half of the Men and Gitch podcast, Gage Dempster, today. But... Guys, how are you? Doing great. I'm, I'm a little sad. You're sad. sad? What's wrong? Why, why is that, folks? Next week is RTO. Uh, for all you white collared folks, that stands for, or non white collared folks, that return to office. Oh. Uh, hybrid model. Oh. Hybrid model. But don't worry, this show will still happen with me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I made good. it work. Awesome. <laughs> so we're glad to hear that. Uh, thank you to everyone joining us live and participating in the chat. Just as a reminder, we are live each and every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. Just search P- Podcast PXN and you will find us there, as well as twitch.tv slash Podcast PXN and Twitter. Guys, we have a topic of the show this week. That is the state of Xbox. We're going to talk about what we're expecting from this year. Uh, some other Halo Infinite uh, stuff in there as well. We're going to kind of go over and talk about. Uh, but first, the show always starts with the PXN News of the Week. So let's go ahead and jump right in. But here comes the quick bites where we chime in whenever we want. Here we go. Ba-doop, 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 or something like that. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> hey, you tried it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it uh guys we have some more russian fallout and no i don't mean we're getting a russian fallout game uh i mean the uh war in the ukraine right now is obviously still going on uh that crazy vladimir putin has decided to try to take over uh because he's a psychopath uh and we have some gaming backlash going against them which is fantastic uh kind of continuing off of last week CD Projekt Red has announced that they are halting all sales in Russia and Belarus. Uh, Also, Microsoft has announced that they're suspending sales of products and services in Russia. Sony also confirmed that they are suspending all PlayStation hardware and software sales in Russia. Bungie announced that they are suspending all Destiny 2 sales and commerce in Russia and Belarus and have continued their Bungie Foundation supports uh, of supporting Ukraine with a free and I'm not going to attempt to pronounce this word that's in Ukrainian, but it means sunflower uh, emblem that is uh, being given to players who show their support, which I think is super cool. Bungie's cool. always done a great job with, with that kind of stuff. I will also include that um, this, this came very late. This is like an hour ago. Oh. And I don't think I saw it in, in here. Oh, I mean, um, I Sony also, yeah, Sony also, uh, or I guess play, PlayStation, sorry. PlayStation came out and um, put out a tweet. Um, very much, uh, you know, not rejecting, uh, suspending all, all software shipments over to, to Russia, um, and then supporting humanitarian aid. Um, pretty cool of them also utilizing the alt text um, feature on Twitter. Uh, not a lot of people do that, and it really does help a lot for accessibility. So, two dubs, in my opinion. Awesome. Also, it was just a whole, it was all around dubs for, for all this news. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, guys. Aikumi Nakamura, I hope I didn't butcher her name, I apologize if I did, revealed her new studio's name that she started last year. It's called Unseen. Uh, She's focusing on a multicultural team with games based around her interests in mystery, horror, sci-fi, and the supernatural. So, of course, she is the uh, famous ex Bethesda or uh, Tango Gameworks developer that uh, came on stage to announce... uh, uh, Crap, what's it called? Uh, what's their next game coming out called? Oh, I'm blanking. Is it Ghostwire? Ghostwire. Or not Ghostwire? Yes, Ghostwire. Oh, it is Ghostwire, yeah. Yes. Uh, she was on stage to announce Ghostwire. That was kind of her, uh, her project uh, that she led. Um, and I was so upset with her because I wanted to see Evil Within 3. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is still super cool. Uh, she's well-regarded yeah. in the industry. Yeah. Yeah, like, like oftentimes in the PXN show we have like a new studio to announce uh like a lot of them have been popping out recently and i always say like oh i'm very interested to see what they make and this this time like i'm genuinely 
generally interested to see what uh, Ikumi Nakamura's studio is going to make. Uh, she, I watched the video that she put it on, or that was posted on IGN about her new studio, and she talked about wanting this. She says she says she's taking going to take a lot of care uh, in making this IP into something that goes beyond video games as well, like in anime and apparel and stuff like that so she's putting a lot of care into whatever nice. her first project is and she says she wants to make a game with characters that reflect real life personalities and minorities and in a world that supports a bunch of different cultures so i'm definitely interested definitely definitely interested to see what she's going to make for real for real um but yeah she's super wholesome so i'm glad that she she uh has a new studio this is the first time i'm learning she also did art for um bayonetta as well as um Okami, which I thought I think is also oh, really cool. Awesome. Like Nakamura just rocks. So nice. I didn't know that. That's awesome. I love yeah. uh, both. Well, I I recently love Bayonetta, but I love Okami. So that's mm-hmm. awesome. Uh, if anyone could hear like this weird screeching sound while Ro was talking, I apologize because <laughs> my dog decided to start chewing this toy like right behind me. So I would no. call it. did you hear this? I didn't hear anything at all. Oh, I didn't you hear didn't? Either, okay. Yeah. I could hear no. him going at it. I'm just like, dog, put the toy down. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yes, very very cool news from uh, from Ikumi. Uh, Glenn's in the chat, of course. He's saying, you're very welcome. I'm here every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Thanks, Glenn. You're Thank the real you. G. Dude, Thank you. Glenn, more on time than me. Wow. I'm going to throw it out there. Wow. Uh, guys, our next story. Nintendo has announced a brand new demo for Kirby and the Forgotten Land featuring the game's first three levels. Uh, this game has to be game of the year. 10 out of 10 greatest game of all time (laughs) (laughs) because of course it's in my (laughs) fantasy critic but uh no right (laughs) but no this is actually super cool the first three levels of the game is is really uh substantial so that's that's really cool that they're uh offering this and uh definitely i'll check this out uh ro are you gonna check this out i i don't know is this is separate from the one that was last week right this is a new demo no i think it's the same one it's the same one Oh. Okay, because I thought the first one was just the first level, yeah, like, or the one that I knew of. Okay, so wrong. This... yeah, either way, I I don't think I'm going to because it it is so close, and I just want to play it, play all of it. <laughs> um, but I've been watching people who have played the demo, and it does look like I would enjoy it anyway. So I don't think I need to try it out. I think I'll, I'm safe to just buy it on March 25th when it comes out. But definitely for yeah. those who are not sure, I would suggest checking it out because everything that I've heard about it is really good. Okay. Get your predictions in right now, because I think Ghostwire Tokyo also comes out on March 25th. No, nope, March 22nd. Okay, Ooh. so just a few days apart. So, I want you two to predict which will have the highest... Kirby. The higher Metacritic. No I doubt. agree. I agree. Yeah. I think Kirby will also have a higher Metacritic. I agree. Bro? I agree. Kirby. Okay. <laughs> or should I just pick Ghostwire? It should be different. <laughs> so, no, no bet that was placed. There we go. Yeah. We'll see if we're wrong or right now. And, okay. and I'm not just picking that because I have it in Fantasy Critic. I legitimately think that it, it will like you. I think they were weren't did they didn't they preview Ghostwire already or a couple of outlets did or was that something else? Um I know they just had the they got the game last week and their embargo goes oh, okay. up I think next Monday or, or no. Okay. Maybe in two weeks, I don't know. So I guess we'll find out find out soon, depending on when Kirby's uh embargo lifts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. I, I did not even realize this story was from last Thursday because I just send myself these tweets of, you know, the <laughs> stories. But, yeah, that was the day after we recorded last week, so I didn't even realize it was already out. <laughs> so chisk, I guess I'll have chisk, to get on chisk. that. Okay, yeah. so it may have been the same demo then. Okay. I just yeah. didn't realize. But okay, cool. God damn, Daniel. What, <laughs> what, what happened? I'm looking, I, I'm looking at something, but I can, I can, I'll bring this up later. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry about it just yet. All right, all right. Uh, moving on. Uh, Gabe Newell, guys, has officially banned NFTs from Steam due to its sketchy behavior, um, <laughs> which is great. His quote here uh, is pretty good. Uh, the people in the space, though, tend to be involved in a lot of criminal activity and a lot of <laughs> sketchy behaviors, he said. So it's much more about the actors than it is about the underlying technology. So yeah, that's uh, it's pretty great that Steam's blocking this. Uh, they're just like, no, nope, oh, yeah. we're not doing this. Uh, so that's refreshing <laughs> to see that. Absolutely, yeah. Oh man, I I have in general seen a lot less NFTs pop up on my Twitter feed, so I'm 
I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Dude, have you been seeing the pictures today of like Google Trends looking at like how many people are looking up NFTs? It's shot like just, way down. Oh, wow. Great. <laughs> we're, we're winning for once. Gamers are winning. Yes. <laughs> well, on one front. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. On one front. <laughs> Uh, guys, this is an interesting story that came out. God of War is reportedly being looked at at a live action, uh, TV series for Amazon Prime, which is kind of insane. Um, also, like, the idea of this is just mind-blowing to me. Like, the budget of this is gonna probably be insane, like, for a mythological, like, freaking themed TV series. Like, I feel like this is gonna be super cool. (laughs) Uh, yeah. and also people were asking like who like Kratos should be and everything. Christopher That's judge should Thank be you, freaking man. Kratos. Like he's already Kratos in the new games and he has a long history with TV anyways. Uh, one yep. of my favorite shows of all time as a kid, uh, Stargate SG one, he was, uh, he was a, a, a main character in that named Teal. So I would love to see, uh, Christopher judge take, take the helm of Kratos. Not to mention, he's also insanely jacked. Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. And huge, like, in general. Tall. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you guys something about this. Will you watch this show? Are you excited for this show? Yeah. I'm, I mean, obviously, we okay. got to see what it is before we can you know, make any assumptions or anything. But I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, I, I think I'd be in for this one, too. I'm, I'm trying to, like... Because that's a valid question, because there's been a lot of, maybe not all of them have released yet, but for Cuphead, for example, I haven't watched that yet, and Castlevania I haven't watched yet. So there's a couple of video game adaptations that I guess I was quote-unquote excited for, and I just never got around to watching. But this one and The Last of Us are definitely stuff that I think I would sit down and watch for sure. Yeah, because for me, I immediately go to like, all right, what is Sony Sony Productions making, right? And and I immediately go to, to three things. God of War, which we had just found out about. Uh, Last of Us, which, to be fair, um, is shaping out to be probably pretty cool because of who is involved in in the writing and directing. And then, of course, most recently, Uncharted, which, Mm. you know, commercial (laughs) success? Sure. Critically? Uh, Not so much. That movie is, like, super whatever. In terms of adaptations, like, it may as well just been, like, another action movie, you know, with Uncharted references. So I see this, and I'm like, hmm, we've had one hit. Sorry, not even. We've had one miss and one possible hit. So I, I don't know where to land. So I'm, I'm going to be super trepidatious and hope to do it right because I don't know. I think I'm a, I'm a skeptic when it comes to TV. I think Sony's strategy is very interesting too. Like literally they're putting their content everywhere. Like I think one's coming on Peacock. One's obviously a movie of Uncharted, oh HBO, my God, Twisted Metal. Amazon Prime. Oh, yeah. yeah, like they're literally everywhere right now. It's pretty insane. And like I think it's smart because you're putting your brand in as front of as front as in front of as many eyes as you possibly can. I think that's very smart. Uh, I don't I don't know if you know, an Anthony Mackie comedy as as true. What's his name? The clown? What Pennywise? No, not Pennywise. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, is going to get people excited to go out and, and play the PS3 Twisted Metal. Yeah, fair. But there is rumors of a new version of Twisted Metal that have been swirling around. That's true. So. Destruction All Stars team. Yeah, um, also making hmm. that. So we'll see. Yes. see. Uh, our get next. Mad with me. Do what? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, okay. go ahead. <laughs> Our next story uh, will be bound to excite a couple of us. Ro, uh, you may you may be running away from this, but uh, hiding. <laughs> Dead Space remake is getting a developer live stream coming this Friday, so it didn't quite make this cutoff. But I'm sure Christian will be excited to bring this on the news next week. And uh, Christian, we got a little tease here, and mm, man, looks good. Is there a tease? Yeah, there's like a nine second. Oh, like, yeah, yes. I I saw this, yeah. And the audio is incredible. Like, obviously, this is, like, just a little teaser, but frick. Oh, my God. Wait, I turned it up? There's, like, a voice in it. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) It's creepy. (laughs) I like it. Dude, (laughs) I don't know if I want to play this remake anymore. I'm going to have nightmares again. (laughs) For those of you that don't know, I I should explain this. Just one, one more time. I'll be quick. When I played the first Dead Space, I had nightmares for um, two weeks that I had to stop the game and like put it on pause for like over a year before I beat it. 
Henry, bro, you should play it. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like I should play it. Yeah, it was oh pretty God. scary. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Glenn says 100% God of War, so I guess he's on the God of War train. There we go. Uh, Glenn, yeah, what happened, man? I thought we had something. <laughs> The next story we've got, guys. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga may get seven DLC character packs based on content outside of the nine core films. So if Kirby's going to be the fu- the greatest game of all time, this is going to be the second greatest game of all time. Am I right? Don't guys? tell me you had... Did you draft yes. Lego yes. Star Wars as well? I did, yeah, yeah, you're going to be drowning in points with that game, I think. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is super cool though. Like, uh, obviously this is the Skywalker saga, so it doesn't necessarily, you know, imply these other characters from Rogue One and and Mandalorian and all the other properties, but it's super cool that they're, uh, they're going to put these characters in there. Um, it kind of reminds me of, you know, Halo, the Master Chief collection, which includes games that don't even have Master Chief in them because, you know, they added Mm. them, but yes, very cool. I, I really like this. I wish I was in an age where like I had nothing to do because I think if I were a kid, Lego Star Wars saga would would be like my game for probably like a month. Yes, because there's so much to do in those games. There really is, and they're always they're they're always pretty good. Like they're pretty good games. Yeah, they rock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, this one might excite you guys, or you know, obviously in our pre-show talk we were talking about the Batman. Uh, you can play as the Batman in Sifu with a mod from community member Nasborn GG, and this looks super cool. Like it's really well done. Like the cape animations and stuff, like are really cool as well in there. Uh, major props to him. It looks and like it's even stylized yeah. in the the art style of Sifu, which I really like. It's super cool. That's fine. I saw this. Yeah, I saw it this morning and immediately fast forwarded it to the hallway scene. And it was <laughs> indeed awesome. Very cool. nice. I think they did, did. Didn't somebody do a Daredevil one too? I think a uh, Daredevil mod. If not, they should get on that. I think you're. I think, I think I saw that. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I do remember that now, actually. And that's yeah. also cool. Very cool. Daredevil. Bring him back. Bring Car- Charlie Cox back. We want to see more. He's Daredevil. back. What you, he's already back. I know, but we want to see, like, you know, back the show or bring something, something more. More. And Daredevil season four is, is confirmed to be happening. Oh, yeah, it is? Wait, is it? Yeah. By the writers <laughs> uh, of um, both, the Daredevil writers are working on Echo, um, and then they will be moving on to Daredevil after that. Oh, nice. You just made Dan's day. <laughs> yes, you did. Especially since I hadn't watched Daredevil until like two months ago, and I'm just obsessed with it now. I just, mm. I'll, I'll come from this. Okay. Welcome to uh, Podcast PXN, where we also talk about TVs and shows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being stupid. Uh, Anyways, next up, guys, we've got Metacritic announcing that Microsoft was the highest rated publisher in 2021 with the la- largest average Metascore in history. Damn. Oh, geez. <laughs> Good for them. Yes. Uh, That's awesome. Obviously, to put it into context, uh, they had 10 scored products. Uh, I believe Sony had 11. Um and Humble Games, I think, had 17. So Humble had more, you know, games to put out there, and they were still in third place. So uh, obviously, you know, take that as you will. But, like, this is probably Microsoft's strongest year that they've ever had. And obviously, it's the strongest that Metacritic's had, but it's the strongest that they've had, I think, in their history, uh, yeah. at least the recent history, because their first party has struggled for a while uh, just in terms of having exclusives. So um but yeah this is good good to see and you know hope gives us hope like, for the future like in the span of a few months they had what halo uh, infinite forza uh, horizon and uh, age of empires all scoring critically yeah. like r- like really well so yes yeah and also i believe the port of flight simulator i believe was this year oh that's right yes yes yeah. uh, flight sim was great yeah. What about was did Psychonauts get good reviews? Yes, that yeah. did as well. Yeah. Yep. So good, good year, good year for sure. Good stuff, guys. We just got this a little bit ago. Warner Brothers Montreal has announced that Gotham Knights is getting a release date for October twenty fifth, 
2022. We should just label this episode the Batman episode. <laughs> but I'd be happy with it. <laughs> I would too. Uh, actually, ironically enough, like watching the Batman movie uh, on Monday has gotten me hyped for this game. Like, me too. <laughs> I, like I was already somewhat on board for this game, more so than Suicide Squad before we got our last look at Suicide Squad. And now, like after watching the Batman, I really want to play this game. So, like, oh, this is it's it's not too far away, Ro. Yeah, I'm I'm bummed that it got delayed, but uh, I'm definitely I'm not wait. Yeah, it was delayed a while ago, but now we got the official date for it, and uh, it's not too not too far. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> so a couple of months, but I'm glad it's not next year. But yeah, it, the Batman movie definitely went, made me itching for some more uh, Batman uh, media to indulge myself in. So yeah, definitely excited for this. Fingers crossed, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, guys, we got some PlayStation news here. Uh, Forspoken has been delayed from May until October to allow it to be a more polished final experience. Um, obviously, they, they posted a m- message here to their Twitter account. They said, made the decision to move the release date of Forspoken to October 11th, 2022. Our vision for this exciting new IP is to deliver a game world and hero that gamers across the globe will want to experience for years to come. So getting it right is extremely important to us. To that end, during the next few months, we will focus all of our efforts on polishing the game and can't wait for you to experience Frey's journey this fall. Thank you for understanding and continued support. Uh, So yeah, this is... Obviously, you know, people that were looking forward to this game, it is maybe a little disappointing to them, but it's good that they're not releasing it in a bad state and continue to work on it to make it a great game when it comes out uh, in October. The rumor on Twitter was that um, part of the reason why it was delayed is that uh, the numbers are coming in uh, for pre-orders and they were, like, excessively low. So there was, like, not enough buzz around it, and so they decided (laughs) to, you know... Well, it wasn't a good time to be releasing in May and build enough buzz. So, and if it, you know, leads to a better product because you get more polish, which happens, right? When you have more time to finish a game, then I think I think it's all all the better. So, yeah, I hope so. I, I think this is what I was thinking of when I said Batman was delayed. This was the delay that I was thinking of from to from May to October. Um, but uh, yeah, I I've been very meh about Forspoken, so maybe it is good to. Get, get the extra time. I, I really like what we saw today, though, at the state of play. That kind of piped me up a little bit more on it. But more time is always is always good to polish these things up. So hearing that the pre-orders were low, I guess, does kind of suck. But hopefully they're able to, you know, show us a little bit more, get us yeah. a bit more excited, and raise those numbers. Absolutely. Uh, guys, not to end the quick bites in a somber note, but we have uh, Sony has asked a court to dismiss a lawsuit. Uh, I wish I could speak today. A lawsuit <laughs> alleging widespread sexism at PlayStation. While yesterday, eight more women have come forward to share their inappropriately handled experiences while working there. Um, I'm going to sum up a little, uh, it by reading some of uh, Stephen Totillo's comments on Twitter because the article is very like. I don't know, businessy, and I'm very, I'm not smart and can't pick it apart. So I'll just read Steven's comments here. Uh, so he said, Yesterday, eight more women came forward to share their stories. And there's a quote that I believe Sony is not equipped to appropriately handle toxic environments. He says, The women describe a range of behaviors across multiple US based PlayStation offices, including demeaning comments, unwelcome advances, a lack of attention paid to their work or ideas, and most frequently, a sense that it was harder for women to be promoted in the company. There's a lot in the statements of the eight women who have come forward, more than he could fit in in one story, but also an account of an all-male gender diversity panel of a woman of a woman who put a check mark in a notebook every time she was interrupted in a meeting 12 to 15 times per meeting. Wow, Jesus, not good. Uh, Sony has, hasn't responded to the new claims, but in February, reacting to the woman who sued... Uh, wrote Mayho Mayho I hope that's right uh, fails to identify a single policy practice or procedure at Sony Interactive Entertainment 
that allegedly formed the basis of any widespread intentional discrimination or had a discretionary impact on women. So not not great uh, news, but um, hopefully, hopefully, like Sony looks at this a, as like a, a learning, you know, experience. Like you can't you can't just dismiss like these allegations. You need to at least investigate them. Like obviously, we don't know what's going Dude, on behind yeah. the scenes, but also like I don't know. It's it's very tricky for them to, I guess publicly comment on this and also at the same time try to you know create an investigation and see what's happening uh if this is true this is awful and this is you know something that should not be happening like it's just it's mind-blowing i guess i don't i don't have words for it yeah first of all believe women yeah secondly when there's eight of them coming forward and you're you know playstation or sorry sony is coming forward saying where's the proof essentially um that's a problem uh you're you're bored uh, of diversity being uh, all all male uh that's, that's the problem. one that got me I was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was and then kid. that we had uh, that this story happened uh earlier as well like this wasn't the, the first time women have come forward um and then since then not um identifying a single policy practice or procedure sie uh to you know in response to that uh, is also a problem. So this is extremely disappointing from you know companies that we revere so so much, right? We we podcast about them, and uh, this is this is shitty. Just plainly, it sucks. And yeah. do better because this is unacceptable. Absolutely. Yeah, I I don't think I could add much, but I I totally agree with what Christian said about these companies that make such awesome stuff that we love to consume, but the some of the people. Uh, that are part of those companies are really just really all kinds of messed up. So we have to obviously hold them accountable and make sure that they, that they do better. But you know, it, it is always a tough situation being someone who consumes their stuff at the same time, but it is always good to bring these, to- these topics uh, to the forefront and talk about them and hope that we can spark yeah. some change for sure. So yeah, I By disagree the way, with you guys are saying. Yeah. By the way, like, First of all, like us as dudes, like we're in a position of privilege to like try and understand like what it's like for a woman to exist. Like I, I think about like how people suggest to go places at nighttime. It's like girls will be commenting like I can't do that because mm. I, I can't even go on a run at nighttime, right? Like stuff like that. Go read some of the first hand accounts, you know, if if you're able to, um, and read like some of the stuff that like is happening at the workplace. It's it's insane. I, I will say one, um, and it's the first one that I saw, and you know, I guess. There, there's you know sensitive warning here for for folks like even the small stuff like facilities uh, are, are like not what they should be because like there was a woman who was uh breastfeeding um or or maybe pumping if it wasn't one of those two uh, and she had to go to a storage closet to do so with a broken lock which is like you know if there's not even a facility to, to do that like in, in a restroom or like another room for this and like come on right mm. I wonder if it's because they're bored of gender diversity panels, all dudes. Absolutely. <laughs> I think Bro, that might be have something to do with it. it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. It, that's so sad. The crazy part, Christian, is is uh just to kind of go back or back up what you're saying there specifically, uh at my work, so we support multiple buildings. So we go to multiple buildings to work on IT for them. So I was actually last week at uh, the sheriff's department, which we support, and they have a designated room for mothers that I didn't know was there. And and apparently this was a new thing that they had just added, which is great. I accidentally tried to open the door because I was trying to, we were legitimately going around the entire building trying to find phones to replace because we're working on replacing all of our phones. And I'm like, I know there's a phone in here because it used to be an office. And I didn't even see the nameplate on there that said mother's room. Thankfully, they had a lock on the door, like like one of those like uh, deadbolt lock, lock or whatever. Yeah. Right. So thankfully, that was on there like for her protection. And I'm like, thank God, because that would have been the most that would have been the worst yeah. moment of my entire life to walk in on someone doing that. So, yes, just yeah. just as an example of, of a workplace that's doing, you know, what they should be doing uh in that situation yeah 
obviously that's not gaming related, but I just <laughs> thought that I'd throw that in there no, because no, it, you said that. Yeah. So it's relevant. It's right. relevant. All right, guys. Moving into our news here, uh, the state of play from Sony has dropped. Uh, we've got a little roundup here. Um, I don't. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet because I was putting together everything for the show. I haven't it's had okay. a chance to check it everything <laughs> out, but uh, I can kind of go over everything. And if you guys want to like pick apart what you want to talk about, um, and then I do have a. Sure. I do have a couple of things about it that I wanted to say as well. Yes. But anyways, so apparently we we're getting uh, futuristic exosuits clashing with dinosaur hordes and exo primal coming in 2023, which I saw a little bit of that on Twitter. It looks because mm-hmm. little... people thought it was dino crisis. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that looks interesting. Uh, we also have a new Ghostwire Tokyo trailer, which is showcasing ghostly threats out on PlayStation 5, March 25th. Hope, hope it's good. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we also have a new Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin demo that lets you carry over progress to the full game. <laughs> we have... Are you, guys gonna, are you guys excited to kill Chaos? Oh, Multiple Definitely. times. Yeah. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> uh, obviously, everyone who listens knows I know nothing about Final Fantasy. <laughs> so, uh, and it's plus it's a Soulsborne like game or Final Fantasy game, so it's even more. <laughs> it's like Soulsborne meets uh, what would I call it? Like you know, like um, fast action. Okay, um, like near, I guess maybe. Yeah, like like a neat. Like yeah, near. Like no, more like a. Um, uh, like a bayonetta kind of oh, okay or a devil may cry that kind of fast actiony but yeah nice. more soulsy i guess okay we got a new look at forspoken which of course we talked about a little bit ago got its delay so uh these screenshots look real nice from it it's real real pretty uh we got gundam evolution which is bringing free-to-play fps action to ps5 and ps4 in 2022 <laughs> uh yeah. <laughs> which the uh, gundams look small interesting yeah or that room was just really really big <laughs> i yeah right <laughs> exactly and then uh our next one is probably the one i'm most excited for uh teenage mutant ninja turtles the cowabunga collection launches yes. this year uh very cool uh it includes a uh the entire Western release of eight and 16 bit games, their Japanese versions, and of course the TMNT arcade games. Together, we're bringing all 13 console and arcade games and their regional versions to PS4 and PS5 in 2022. Uh, friend of the show, um, Eric Ginn, also um, co host with me on Penultimate Conquest, uh, tweeted that he'd pay 40 bucks just for Turtles in Time, and I'm right there with him. Turtles in Time <laughs> is like a phenomenal game. Heck yeah. Played the, I used to play the um, 1989 arcade game with my brother all the time when I was younger. That's one of my first gaming memories. In an arcade? No, actually. I think it was on oh, okay. mm, NES or SNES or the other, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we got Gigabash, which is bringing multiplayer monsters and mayhem to PS5 and PS4, which this looks... A little wild. I, don't... <laughs> I forgot about. It. I forgot about that. It was like thirty seconds. <laughs> little teaser. Um, we got JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All Star Battle R launches. Let's go. This fall. <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm only I only just started watching uh, this anime. Um, it's wild. It's wild. <laughs> Eyes of the Heaven. <laughs> uh, we've got. We're, I guess we're battling to hell this and back awesome. in Trek to Yomi. This one looks cool. Yes. This is one I've been excited for for a while. Yeah. I think this was the okay. second trailer we've gotten, and it looks still just as great. Oh, it looks yeah. like Ghost of Tsushima ask. Oh, wow, because it's set in Japan and the man in the board. Oh. <laughs> Christian, I didn't even get to watch the trailer yet. Cut me a little slack. <laughs> it does have the black and white uh, samurai. Yeah. Like, uh, it's very much Kurosawa. Yeah. Is it a side scroller? Some of it. It looks cool. Yeah. It's mostly 2D. Um, there are 3D elements uh, that you go through as well. Cool. Looks rad. 
Uh, the next one, of course, I think this is going to be uh, one of Christian's favorites, probably. Returnal yes. is getting a free Ascension update, which is adding co-op and Tower of uh, Sis... I don't even know what that word is. Sisyphus. Sisyphus. Ode. Yeah. Cool. Oh, sorry. This is my time to yes, respond. Yes, that's your time. time. <laughs> First of all, I think, the, I think this update also might add the... Um, I think they were looking at adding like difficulty settings for those oh. like that were wanting to do that. So I think they're gonna if they don't add that, I think they were looking into adding more accessibility options as well. So I th- yes, I, I think that's coming because it was it, in the trailer. It was like uh, Returnal Ascension, and then like the the update was like 3.0 or something like that. So um, hoping that gets you know more diesel soon. Otherwise, the co-op I think is really cool for people who may have been stuck playing this game um, just on their own. Uh, I had a few friends who like didn't finish it. Maybe a co-op would. You know, go a long way. It certainly goes a long way in, in Elden Ring. Sometimes I've had a co-op in that game like twice. And then yeah, the Tower of Sisyphus mode, which is I think is uh, like an endless challenge or some kind of mm-hmm. maybe a raid. I, I forget what it is. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, our endless mode is just sounds super intriguing. Yes. Yeah. It it sounds really cool. Actually, I was just about to say that. It's I was reading that paragraph while you were talking. It says true. True to our arcade roots, the Tower of Sisyphus is effectively our endless mode. Players will strive to ascend the tower as high as possible. However, much like the tragic story of Sisyphus, I'm probably butchering that every time, uh, there, is no, no, right. there is no end to the climb, and players are tragically destined to meet their demise as the mode gets increasingly harder. The only question is how far can you get before succumbing? That, that actually sounds um, pretty cool. I, I would probably be dead about, you know, 10 minutes into it and then be like what the heck but cool for all you english major fans and or absurd fans or camu fans just hearing the word sisyphus just gets me going <laughs> you know, sisyphus is uh, you look up the man and pushing the boulder up the hill you'll know exactly who's it. cool uh, we're also getting the Diofield Chronicle that was announced for PS5 and PS4. And why do I feel like this logo looks like Final Fantasy? <laughs> Wait till you see the next one. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely very uh, Final Fantasy. Yes, it is Square Enix, but uh, yeah, it looks this. I I think this is one of the ones that I'm kind of interested in. Um, it is. I, I think I've been lying to myself, you guys, for a really long time about my excuse for not liking The Witcher Three. And I just said it's because I don't like high fantasy and fantasy settings. But maybe I just didn't like The Witcher 3. And I think that's okay. It was a while ago. Yeah. And there's a lot of high fantasy games that I do like. So I, th- I think that was just but, an excuse I was making up in my mind. But Witcher 3 isn't a tactics game. That's true. True. That's true. You like yeah. tactics games? I like Fire Emblem. <laughs> and I like XCOM. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm sort really, of sometimes. I'm something about you. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. I like it. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I don't like the name. Yeah. <laughs> it's like their triangle strategy sort of weird titles that they just decide to keep for some reason. Yeah. In the last game they announced, guys, Valkyrie Elysium descends on PS5 and PS4 in 2022. And again, it looks like Final Fantasy look. <laughs> no. uh, yeah. I like this art style a lot, though. This is super cool art style. Yeah, yeah, the art style was great in this. Um, I like I'm the art style. A... Sorry, no, please. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say I like the art style for like the the cover, like the the key art, but the in game stuff was kind of weird for me, kind of hit or miss in some scenes. But yeah, sorry, Christian, go. go yeah, it's a little interesting, right? Just to jump on that because the uh, actual like art around the world kind of looks more like to like a realistic style, but yet the mm-hmm. characters are kind of like the more cell shady, at least yeah. in, in gameplay. Yeah, so, I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. I will so. say, uh, it's a great time to add that Imran um, tweeted today uh, a joke saying that Square Enix was re- um, announcing all these games that you'd forget that Babylon's Fall released. Mm. <laughs> oh, That game is not doing well at all. Not no. doing good. Not good at all. Oh man, I, uh, I want to check how they're doing. <laughs> so, Concur- have you seen concurrent players? It's it not good. Yeah, that's what I was going to check to yeah. see if I could figure that out. It was like in the hundreds, right? Like very low. No, it it was just over a thousand. Was it? Oh, okay. Yeah, 
Which still, for a new game, is still not Great. very good. Uh, so obviously, my favorite part was the TMNT part. Christian, I'm assuming your favorite was the Returnal. Hold on, actually, um, it was Battle uh, Battlefield 2042. That was in that was in the, is, was 1000. You're right. In the hundreds was okay. Babylon's Fall. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, and no, my favorite was Trek to Yomi. Oh, okay. Uh, Ro, what was your favorite part of the state of play? I am in the same boat. Trek to Yomi was definitely my my favorite part as well. I think it looked the most unique and fun to play out of everything. Um, I think the Dio Field thing was probably my my second favorite uh, announcement. Yeah, nice. You guys are just the same person, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we like cool games, man. That's fair. That's yeah. so wrong. That's fair. <laughs> Uh, guys, we're going into a not so great segment again, uh, but um, obviously needs to be talked about yet again. Uh, sadly, Activision continues their their uh, I guess streak you could call it of terrible uh, practices. But uh, Activision is now blaming the Microsoft deal for their inability to hire another female board member, um, which is very interesting to me because. They had essentially, so there's a, there's a lot here. I, I, I probably won't read this whole thing because there's just so much here. But essentially what happened was they have their board that, um, that is the head of the company or whatever, their, their board overseeing Activision. And they were supposed to have, within three years, they were supposed to have three women on a board of ten uh, individuals. They had two. And through last, at the end of last year, they still only had two, which was yep. you know obviously that that was that didn't get met that criteria didn't get met and they're blaming the Microsoft deal because they essentially didn't have the ability to you know hire another female before then uh what the hell are you doing the rest of the 3 years Activision cuz it's not just the Microsoft acquisition was literally the end of last year that they started talking like i think late September or October like what the f- what yeah. Very. Hey, I'll, I'll read this segment right here. The law went into effect on January 1st, 2019, at which time Activision Blizzard had two women in its 10 person board of directors, uh, Rebecca Bowers and Elaine Wynn. Wynn departed the board in 2020, at which time the company almost immediately appointed another woman, Don Ostroff, to replace her. The company had not appointed any other board members since Bowers' appointment in 2018. Yeah. That's yeah. unacceptable. Awful. I mean, yeah, not good, not good at all. But that's just the first part, guys. We still have two <laughs> more stories about Activision. I know, I know. Microsoft's Activision Blizzard deal has also being investigated for insider trading now, and uh, apparently, this is on uh, good old Bobby Kotick's watch again. Here we are, Uncle Bobby up there. Uh, Calling in some favors for his buddies. Uh, apparently, the Wall Street Journal reports that Barry Diller, Alexander von Furstberg, and David Geffen invested around a, a cool, just a cool 108 million guys. It's nothing, a small investment. Oh, just yeah. pocket change, right? Yeah. In Activision <laughs> Blizzard, just days before Microsoft acquired the company and shares went up in value. Their investment has climbed to 168 million and could be worth up to. 200 million if they keep their shares until the Microsoft deal closes later this year. They go on to say that essentially these three guys are very, you know, close friends with him. Like Diller has described himself as a long term friend of Bobby Kotick uh, and also served on Coca Cola's board of directors with him. Uh, Von Verstberg is the stepson of Diller, so related to him. And Geffen is another long time friend. I mean, this is this couldn't be any more clear than than that. Like, what the hell? What are you doing, Bobby? Like, why? No, I just, yeah. How does it? How does it keep getting worse every week for Activision? Like, just when I think, like, all right, surely nothing else like is gonna come out. Like, we've we've seen the worst of it, and just just keeps piling on. Keeps getting worse. Yeah, I. At this point, I guess we shouldn't be surprised, but. It is always shocking to see how low they can keep putting themselves. Like, yeah. how 
how degenerate are you? And it just keeps getting worse, as we'll see with the next story, which isn't technically a news news story, right. but them suing, or we'll talk about it. But yeah, it's just, it's ridiculous how <laughs> this was going on for so long. You know what? Maybe Microsoft can't, I, I, they can't take over soon enough at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, and obviously we're not saying Microsoft is perfect or anything, but far better than what activision's I mean, got going better, on yeah. <laughs> they've yeah. got to be right i hope so <laughs> yeah oh gosh uh and then the final story of activision guys because we have a nice trio here to round out their shittiness uh activision blizzard has been sued by a family of an employee who had who had passed away from suicide um and the complaint alleges that sexual harassment was a significant factor leading up to her death um, so the complaint from Janet and Paul, um, Moynihan claims that sexual harassment at the company was a significant factor in the death of their daughter, Harry Manoyahan. I hope I'm not butchering that name. A 32 year old finance manager at Activision Blizzard who was found dead at an Activision Blizzard company retreat in 2017. In a report to the Washington Post, Mani- Moynihan. Gosh, dang it. I did so well. <laughs> Moynihan's parents filed the wrongful death, wa- death lawsuit in Los Angeles Superior Court. According to the report, Moynihan is the employee referenced in the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing lawsuit that was filed in July last year. So, yes, uh, not good at all. Uh, and I don't even want to go into like the details of it. Like They have details here on what sure. occurred. Like This is just not okay like don't mm. yeah and i mean we even read the details of what was happening at these studios anyway right under activision like just yeah. a few months ago that kind of culture the frat culture that they had there like a terrible environment for a minute like first of all horrible for like someone to have to you know like this is the decision that she made to commit suicide it's terrible i, I really hope that this family wins this lawsuit and activision settles for a hefty uh, sum because they like they at least deserve that yeah i i agree it's just it's so i remember when we talked about this last a couple months ago when it first uh, appeared all the crazy stuff that was going on in activision and this one was just one of the most infuriating ones because somebody literally died because of the awful environment that they were working at just trying to make ends meet just trying to pay the bills Mm -hmm. doing something that i assume they they love doing maybe they didn't love the job i don't know that that really doesn't matter that you shouldn't shouldn't feel unsafe at a job that you don't like or like it doesn't matter but yeah she, she thought that she had to had to kill herself because of the the terrible things that were happening to her at her work and i don't know what it is about video games and this uh this medium i mean i know what happens everywhere but there's just something about video games that seem to bring it, i guess it's the dude bro culture that is in video right. games more more than other workspaces and i don't know it's just it's so upsetting and i i i hope stuff is going to change soon for for women for trans people for minorities just everybody who needs to be protected finds that protection in their in their workplaces because it's it's a it's afforded to everybody else but yeah. but the people that need it so yeah and you know what this leads to which i didn't see this new story up and I, I forgot to bring it up i forgot to write it in so i can bring it up now um it leads to uh studios not being able to hire anyone case in point quantic dream not being able to hire anyone uh, to work on star wars and now that game you know being so mm-hmm. far out uh, far out as su- what am i trying to say how, how should i phrase this being as far away as 2027 or 2028 yeah which is insane why number one like why, why announce would, it why would you announce that yeah <laughs> like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give, give star wars to someone else yeah not a not a company like quad anyway let's type on the point yeah yeah if obviously we were pretty clear there but if we weren't clear enough don't be shitty to people. Don't fucking sexually harass people. Don't be a fucking asshole. Just fucking live your life and leave people alone. That's it's funny that people need to be told, but they do. Yeah, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> yeah. Never mind. So, Sorry. <laughs> you gotta tell guys to wash their hands, man. You seen like bowls? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's gross. 
for us. Yuck. All right. Moving out of the heavy stuff, guys. Uh, <laughs> we're moving into GTA features and pricing, which is our last news story. So the first thing here, uh, I was kind of going to ask you guys what uh, what your guys' thoughts were on the GTA 5 uh, and GTA Online, PS5, and Series X and S versions, uh, the new features that were revealed. Uh, we got a few new features. Um, it's going to support three new graphic settings for players who want specific things from their games. So you get fidelity mode, which is native 4K with ray tracing at 30 frames per second. Uh, for both PS5 and Series X, Series S will support upscaled 4K. Performance mode will target 60 FPS at upscaled 4K for PS5 and Series X, 1080p on Series S. And finally, performance ray tracing mode, which is a hybrid of fidelity and performance mode, which will run GTA 5 at an upscaled 4K with ray tracing and target 60 frames per second. This mode is only available on PS5 and Series X. Uh, it, would also, it will also take advantage of the DualSense controller on the PS5 with haptics and adaptive triggers, uh, as well as Tempest 3D audio for PS5, spatial audio for Xbox. Both console versions will take advantage of the SSDs, of course, for faster loading. Uh, and Rockstar promises high-end PC visuals on console, including increased population and traffic variety, increased vegetation density, improved lighting, uh, water reflections, and other elements, plus improved anti-aliasing, motion blur, highly detailed new explosions, fire, and much more. So it, it seems like a, a pretty decent um, port that Rockstar's doing, which I, I thought they would do. You know, they did a decent job with the Xbox One and, and um, PlayStation 4 versions of the game as well. Um, but I don't know if any of these features excite you guys. Um, I've, I think obviously we can throw in the pricing thing here as well to kind of factor into your decision. Uh, so the the pricing, in my opinion, is a bit odd and not consistent, which I don't think is necessarily a product of certain things. Anyways, the pricing GTA the pricing. Do what? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, you're, sorry. You're, gonna, you're gonna you're gonna tell us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, GTA Five for PS Five will be seventy five percent off for the first three months of launch, which seventy five percent off. I don't know if you can say that, but I don't know. Uh, priced at nine ninety nine, um, which this is only on PS five nine ninety nine on PS five. After three months, the game will cost forty dollars. So I guess they're saying seventy five percent off of forty dollars. So I guess forty dollars is the new retail price for GTA five. Uh, this version of the game includes the single player story mode and GTA Online. Now remember, the standalone GTA Online version is for PS five is completely free for the first three months of release on PS five. So you can get it free if you get it right away. Uh, the standalone game for GTA online is $20. Uh, so now we're jumping oh, right. to the Xbox side of things. GTA five for series X and S will be 50% off. So not 75%, 50% off for the first three months priced at 1999. After three months, the game will cost 39 99 this version of the game includes the single player story mode and GTA Online. Xbox versions of GTA Online will not be free at launch, but are on sale for three months at $9.99 for just the online portion. After the first three months, the standalone will be $19.99. So there's a lot of confusing things here. I'm just like, I understand why the Xbox version is priced differently because Sony did that deal with Rockstar where GTA Online is free for the first three months. So essentially, you're dropping the extra $9.99 that GTA Online costs. However, it does look a little weird when you're like, all right, you've got the Xbox version that's $19.99. You've got the PlayStation version that's $9.99. Comes with the exact same content. I do not like that at all. Like, it's the same thing that I always talked about back in the Destiny 1 era and even early Destiny 2 era when there was content that was locked on platforms because it wasn't yeah. PlayStation. So, uh, but yeah, uh, obviously um, their pricing is uh, uh, not terrible. I don't think the pricing is terrible. $20 or $9.99, I guess, on PlayStation. It, it's not terrible for an upgrade if you're looking for that, um, but... I don't know what, what were your guys' thoughts on these features and pricing. Uh, oh, would you, you like to go first? Yeah. Sure, I can go first. I probably have the least to say anyway because GTA is just not has hasn't been my thing. So the the upgrades 
great for those who are interested in that kind of stuff. I can't even tell you what, what is my favorite upgrade here because I just haven't really played the game at all. Sure. But uh, the pricing stuff is is interesting. It is really uh, it makes me scratch my head a little bit, but I think I'm starting to wrap my head around it. And I, it does suck that PlayStation is getting uh, uh, the better end of the, the deal and all that, but but for but even the base price for the game is is really good like forty dollars for GTA Five like yeah. that's a that's a really popular game that people are still playing to this day the game that came out in, on PS3 um so yeah I think the nine ninety nine stuff that's awesome and even the re- retail new retail price for it is is great even if if you miss the sale that's still a pretty good deal I think um but yeah that's truly really how I feel about it. <laughs> I will start from the worst and move it's to the best. Like, yeah, okay. Okay, let's see. Let's first see of this. all, <laughs> first of all, I understand that Rockstar has a relationship with PlayStation, right? Cool. Great for them. <laughs> but those kinds of relationships, I'll put my thumbs down. Those kinds of relationships <laughs> should never lead to business deals where one platform is having to pay significantly less than the other. That is just absurd to me. Why is PlayStation players, why are, why are Xbox players having to pay more for the same product? That makes no sense to me. Like, time and exclusivity on its own creates issues, but at least that's better than, than like, being priced. Come on, like, free compared to $20? That's just, that is <laughs> asinine. Why, yeah. why is this a thing? Terrible decision-making. Like, you're just... If I were an Xbox player and I was interested in, in, in playing uh, Grand Theft Auto, I'd, f- I'd feel jaded by, by this. Like, I, I would lose interest. And that's just me, though. But, but still, like, you understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, so, so those are, otherwise, like, $10 for the first three months, like, I mean, that's fair, right? I wish it was the way, that way on Xbox. But, like, the actual pricing, like, it, that's what they decided. Okay, sure. Um, my other thoughts here on the features. Um, Performance ray tracing is probably one of my favorite like iterate like options to play a game now. Like I love performance RT. It's it's fantastic. You get the best of both worlds, right? And I get to see nice pretty lights, reflections, and I still get to target sixty. Um to answer Dan's question from like super earlier, um, does this excite me? No. But I'm sure it excites GTA players, right? Yeah. Maybe one day I'll get back into it because GTA online is actually really fun, but otherwise like Okay, it's it's also an old game, so like, do I really care? No, because I'm I'm moving on to to newer things. Um, but the last thing I'll say is the inclusion of utilizing the SSD is legit a game changer in Grand Theft Auto because GTA Online <laughs> the load is times. nothing is nothing but loading, especially when you're hopping into between jobs and all these like cool like custom games. Like half of it is just loading. That's We've already one seen thing that I remember like Gran Turismo. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, Gran Turismo, like, uh, that's my, my most recent example, because, like, on older platforms, it's, you know, upwards, like, like towards a minute to load a track um, down to one second on PS5, so I can't imagine what GTA Online will look like with an SSD. That, that, that on its own, is exciting. Yeah, like, Horizon, too. Like, the loading for Horizon is... An, uh, they actually intentionally have an it's option loaded. in there to slow yeah. it down for PS5 <laughs> if you want that, which I turned that immediately off, but... <laughs> Well, it wasn't it wasn't slow down. It was uh, you have to push X to continue. Yes. Oh, and you're the right. X comes it comes up like yes. uh, uh, in a second. So yeah, because yeah, I I turned that off. I'm just like I don't care about the hints. I'll just I'll just get the fast sure. loading. So yeah, that's yeah. yeah it's insane. Uh, GTA Five story takes thirty minutes to load in. It feels like, but we'll <laughs> see what happens. Uh, all right, also guys. transferring your characters. That cool. Yes, very cool. Which they did that uh, already from last gen to this previous yes. gen. So that's that's amazing. Mm-hmm. They're doing that again. So cool. Uh, guys, a little fantasy draft check-in real quick here. Uh, oh. Our points totals, <laughs> we've got a new leader, Christian. Oh? Yeah, this is why I said damn Daniel like way earlier. Not, <laughs> I was not referencing a vine. <laughs> so I'm at the top with 69.9 points. Now, to be fair, I also nice. have the most games right now out of everyone. I think I have, I have five games released. Christian only has two released. Uh, so I have 69.9. Christian's at 41.82. Row is at 8.69. Row only has one game. Why'd it go yet. down? So, 
I did a good one. Oh. <laughs> Favorite. I was at 10 last week. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> Here's uh, what I want to know, because you were at 41 last week. Oh, sorry. Keep going. And then Gage is at zero because he hasn't had any games <laughs> released yet. But uh, the next game that's on our radar is Tunic, March 16th. That's one week from today, Christian. You you got Tunic. Oh, yeah. Those are my games. Yeah. I forgot. And my little buddy, like my little buddy go. Yes. <laughs> and if you're anyway. wondering what game got me more points last week, Christian, Triangle yes. Strategy got me points last week oh you had that and gt7 yes in the I same did. week yep okay that explains it that explains it jesus <laughs> whatever like i said last week we're gonna be eating after e3 man you're gonna be like oh i don't have any money until they all get delayed <laughs> until 2023 <laughs> no that's a, a good point yeah. i'm kidding all right guys moving <laughs> into what you got for me uh I haven't played many video games this week. Uh, I've kind of been taking a break a little bit, but I played a little bit more for Horizon uh, and traveled deeper into the West. Still enjoying it. Still, uh, yeah, still going, still going on. So that, sure. I don't have much of an update for you. Hi, Brent. Oh, <laughs> oh, I completely, yeah, I missed that. <laughs> Hello, Brenty, and hello, hello Kirik in the Twitch chat as well. I apologize, I missed you. Um, oh, he's no. playing Horizon Sifu Ring. Such a good game. That's a single game, right? <laughs> yes, Horizon Sifu Ring. Oh man. Um, well, oh, I I just got the joke. That's amazing. Bro. That's a lot of games at once. Yeah. Bro, what you got for me? Yes, I haven't had much time to play much either, but I did make some time for a little bit of Destiny at Reset yesterday because um, the raid dropped and a little bit of uh, raid dropped last week. So some things changed in, in Destiny. That, that usually is a new thing that they did in Destiny 2 where a te- when a team beats the raid, there's like a little cutscene oh. explaining the, the Guardians that infiltrated the Pyramid in this case and just some new story stuff was added. So I, I did that. And that was fun. And yeah, I got a. I figured out how to do crafting a little bit better and how to grind that out. And so I've been working on getting different guns to get the god rolls on some weapons. So uh, yeah, I've been working on that. And that's really it. I haven't done the raid yet. Probably won't do it for a, for a while. But are you uh, raid ready? Like, is your gear at that level? I am raid ready. Yes. 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 So I could do it if I wanted to, but probably not going to do it anytime soon. And and just this is a super long time ago, probably don't even remember. But Bob Balone's Fall right now has 195 player players oh. playing it in the last hour. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so that's not good. That's not good. But yeah, playing Destiny when I can. That's it. Cool, Christian. What you got for me? Because it's always a surprise with you. <laughs> take take a guess. No, please. Uh, Elden Ring, of Elden course. Ring. Of course, man. It's <laughs> consumed my life. Do I have writing like writing projects that I need to be working on? Absolutely. Am I doing them? Oh God, no. Because Elden Ring has taken over. It's all I think about. Like I think about that game the way I think about the Batman. In my Batman review on Letterbox, I wrote, I saw "This it. made me forget about Elden Ring." <laughs> Just for three hours, and I got home. What I do? I played more Elden Ring because that game is incredible. Uh, game of the year. And now you can pause in it, right, Christian? Oh yeah, I saw that you can do that now. Pretty pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, by by a little exploit, but I I, I don't need it. Oh, I'm also not, hold on. I should also say that I'm not a guy who's against pause buttons. Like if they include that, then great. disgusting pause button. I just find it always fascinating. <laughs> like the Souls fans always find like workarounds to do like traditional things yeah. like that. That's it's just interesting to me. Do I have more thoughts? Yes, but I, I don't want to get into it. You know what I mean. <laughs> the whole debacle on Twitter has been too much for me to keep up with. Oh god! Oh, now I, I want to know what happened. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, the oh, with, like devs. the game devs. The oh, yeah, yeah, the game devs coming out. Yeah, and I was like, well, that's why I just want to partake in this conversation. I'll just keep playing my my silly little game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very true. Very true. Sometimes on the internet, Christian, as I've learned, just keep your mouth shut and just enjoy it. You know. Yeah. That's that's what I've learned. I'm uh, ready to die, Carly. Though I'll keep I'll keep tweeting about iCarly. I <laughs> There's a video of Miranda Cosgrove cussing. Insane. <laughs> I'll send it later. 
That's awesome. All right, guys, moving into our topic of the show, state of Xbox. Here we go. We have some some things to talk about here. So what's the current state of Halo Infinite is the first thing I have here. So we got a bit of an update from 343 finally on Friday. Um, People have been waiting. Well, fans have been waiting on this for a long time, giving us some sort of roadmap of what's what's happening, what's coming up. Obviously, season one of Halo Infinite was extended by three months, an entire because the seasons are only supposed to last three months. They extended it an extra three months, so it's a six month season. Uh, obviously, people weren't too happy about that initially, and uh, it only got worse uh, from there. And now, being at the uh, you know midpoint of this season now, where season two was supposed to drop, it is getting um, to the point where. There's start, we're starting to notice things that are, are, are missing more so than we did at launch. Um, but first, we'll focus on this update, and then we'll go into that kind of stuff. So the update is uh, the focus of the Halo Infinite team and priority order, which I like how they're kind of, you know, here you go. This is what's coming. Number one is addressing issues negatively impacting the player experience. Those things are like desync. A big team battle was broken for a little bit. Uh, there's issues with uh, hit detection. There's multiple issues that they're working on as far as the the core of the game. Uh, Number two is completing season two content and delivering it as promised on May 3rd, which uh, is the delayed, you know, date that we're getting it. And number three is continuing work on campaign co-op forge and season three, which is obviously following season two Uh, campaign co-op. They did it. Sorry. Uh huh. That would hit around like August then. Is that correct? Three months. Yes, August. Yep. Yeah, okay. So uh, they do go into here. Uh, we also have a priority zero, which I personally, I agree with this. And uh, I don't know anyone who would not agree with this because uh, it's more of an issue of like, what are they doing behind the scenes to improve the culture of the studio? Whereas the, this is a statement that I could get behind. So priority zero that undergirds everything we do, namely team health with, with an emphasis on getting ourselves into a sustainable development rhythm so that we can deliver great experiences to all of you while keeping a healthy work-life balance. Priority zero means that we sometimes need to move slower so that we can move faster later. Frankly, these last few months have been slower than we expected, and we we sincerely thank you for your patience as we stay true to the priorities above. So I think my important takeaway of this is the game should have been delayed. At the end of the day, the game should have been delayed by Microsoft. (laughs) And I think the issue is the game wasn't delayed, and the game was not necessarily in the state that it was, you know, it should have been in at launch missing features forge campaign co-op uh issues at launch all of that stuff and you're starting off on that front where you're already behind on where the game's at so when you're delivering a uh a ongoing game such as this it's a game as a service or as at least that's what they wanted it to be you have to be able to continuously put out new content. Otherwise, the game is going to go stale. You're going to lose players quickly, It's and that's what's happening. And I think the issue is because the game wasn't delayed, they're working on all of those issues that are foundational issues, like core mechanics and gameplay and, and issues that they find along the way and not working as much on the season content, which is your maps, your modes, your, your armor, your you know, colors, all of that. And there's so many things that they've tried to address, but like, for instance, the battle pass, the progression system, they've kind of just put patchwork things in there to like satisfy people for now, but that's not the long-term solution. So they're also working on long-term solutions for those issues alongside all of the season content. So... There's a couple issues with that, and the issue is is we're not getting content now. And they've announced that Season 2 will launch with two new maps, which is not great. Six months to get only two new maps is not good, especially comparing to previous Halo titles. And again, at the end of the day, you have to put the people accountable that are the people, you know, the people who should be accountable should be held accountable. Like, 
I personally don't believe that it's 343's fault. I don't think it's the developer's fault that this has occurred. Yeah. I think you have to give them time. If you don't give them time, nothing's going to come true. Nothing's going to come to fruition. So, like, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to keep rambling. I'll let you guys no. chime in. No, I'll, I'll even agree with you. I don't think there's ever been a, 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 a case where a studio said, like, no, we can just ship it now. I think a studio will always say, like, you know, if I can get more, if they can get more time, it's probably a good thing. And it, it has to be a Microsoft thing, right? Like, it, it just had been in development for so long that it just needed to come out at some point, right? Yeah. And it already had a, a one-year delay before that. So I can understand why Microsoft wanted to push it out, but we're like, Dan, you just point out, we're seeing the repercussions of, you know, what happens when you released, you know... A, I, I, don't, I, I, I hesitate to call it an unfinished product because... Yeah. People did really enjoy, like, critically, that campaign was, like, really well. Yeah. Uh, they enjoyed the feel of the multiplayer. So, like, it was close to finished product, but they're, like, we're seeing it now. that There's like, just small things that could, like, really go far to improve, like, player experience. For the most part, I think, like, Halo is still, like, it's, it's still a good game, right? Like, you wouldn't go so far as say it's, like, an incomplete or bad game, right? I incomplete may you could make an argument for incomplete but sure but yes i like I, like you're saying christian i've been enjoying halo non-stop since launch like and that's mm. kind of I, I feel like that's the tricky thing too like i the selfish part of me was like happy that they released you know when they did because i got i've gotten to play for the past you know four months or whatever it's been and like i've enjoyed my time with the last four months that i've had with it has it been perfect? No. And I, I think it's important to address those issues. And I think that's the other thing, like, we have to talk about, like, constructive criticism is fantastic. Like, developers want constructive criticism. But bringing developers sure. down and, you know, by, you know, criticizing them by, like, going after them, like, saying, this is awful, you're terrible, this company's awful, you know, this needs to be thrown away, everything's trash, like, that kind of stuff does nothing. It's literally unproductive, and it just, you're tearing down people who are working on these games, and they fucking care about these games. Like, there's not a single person that you could point to at 343 that doesn't care about Halo. They work there because they love Halo. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, that's all they do there is work on Halo. So, like, bringing people down, like, mentally, that's also not a good thing either. Like, you're literally trying to destroy someone's mental, you know, aspect of their lives because of a video game that didn't come out the way you expected it to come out. Like, that's my main issue is, like, people in the community just need to be better about constructively criticizing and not, you know, lambasting, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, I, yeah. yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Ro. No, no. I, I guess I don't have much more to add than what both of you already said. Um, yeah, it, it. I agree that Halo should have been, uh, should have been delayed. It does suck that we that the first season got extended, and like you said, we're get, only getting two maps with the the second season. When we were, I, I assume most of us were expecting a little bit more. Um, I'm sure they are adding other things besides the two maps, but yeah. it just the two maps for for a new season does kind of kind of suck um and it does seem like they're playing catch up now because of the because of the not the early release but the <laughs> the release that they decided to go with yeah. because of uh, Microsoft um instead of releasing with everything ready so yeah it, i guess that's what Microsoft is going to have to live with now because of the decision that they decided to to make and unfortunately, the people that have to pay for it the most are the people who are who are making the game that, that care about it the most. But um, yeah, I, I, I agree. Just give them some time, and it'll be back to where it needs to be. Like Halo, Halo uh, Master Chief Collection. I'm sure you could make that. Uh, you could talk about that as, as well, Daniel. How it started and where it where it ended up, completely night and day. And I don't think Halo Infinite is nowhere in the in the state that Master Chief was when it first launched. So they're in a much better space. Uh, to get things back on track not even to say that it's off track but like to do the catching up that they need to do right exactly and that's the important part like once they have you know the foundation you know fix the way it needs to be fixed then they can focus on the continuous content and i feel like that's only going to get better as time goes on because they're getting caught up on that yeah. stuff so it's a tricky thing for sure um but yeah by the time like Sorry. campaign co-op 
takes off like yeah people will <laughs> gamers have short memory short memory right <laughs> like we'll forget like how, how, what they were feeling like in february when all these games are launching so yeah and there, it's, it's gonna take time but there was also a really good perspective that i saw on twitter um from one of the community members which i'm not a hu- uh, to be honest i'm not a huge fan of his normally uh like i don't i disagree with him many times but in this case i agreed with him uh the act man he is his name on twitter but uh he essentially posted a video about you know the issues that halo infinite has launched with and the reason why it's dropped so much in popularity in recent weeks and i completely agree with him that you know halo the last especially the last decade you know of games that we've gotten has always been about like these multiple pieces of community that are all coming together to like bring everyone in so like you have your campaign co-op people you have your forge people you have your multiplayer people you have your competitive multiplayer people you have your you have all these segments of the halo community and all of them are just saying this game's great this game's great bringing all these people in to play the game and what you're missing right now you're missing that campaign co-op group that play campaign co-op you're missing the forge group the forge community that makes awesome forge content you're missing so many pieces that makes halo special and makes it different than every other video game that the sum of its parts isn't necessarily being held up as good because you don't have as many hands holding it up um so i thought that was a really good perspective um on the whole situation and that makes sense too because like you can look you can point to uh like another shooter which is call of duty think about the the call of duties that came out you know that were lacking a campaign um, and see how like those games didn't do as well like retain- granted it, it, two totally totally different cases but like right. the retention there like when it's not a, a a fully featured game like the retention isn't isn't as high um or even more recently battlefield like the concurrent players there have dressed tremendously absolutely granted one game did come out in better shape than the other right <laughs> yes <laughs> despite halo's issues yes it, it was you know playable yeah. and enjoyable yeah uh and yeah, like the last thing I want to say is like, I've seen so many people say, oh my God, 343, they can't handle live service. It's terrible, all this. They literally have already done live service. Like people always forget about it because nobody, you know, Halo 5 didn't get the attention that it deserved, but Halo 5 had literally the best post-launch support I've ever seen. And like people are surprised when I say that, but Halo 5 had almost two years of monthly updates, one one update a month with a ton of content. Like, it's always funny to me because I always posted them on my personal Facebook page. Like, the they made little infographics of, like, all of the content that was coming each month, and I had them on my Facebook. So, like, I'll pull up Facebook occasionally, and I'll see, like, see your memories, and it's like all of the freaking monthly updates from Halo 5. Like, they did such a phenomenal job with that game, like... And and Microsoft also, another great example with Halo 5, gave them an entire year after the beta until the game launched. The beta came out one year before the game came out. That's the, like, if Halo Infinite launched in beta of November 2021, the game would be a completely different game, November 2022. Yeah. So, And it would have been in Game of the Year contention this year. Exactly. Well, yeah, <laughs> Elden Ring, I think, is going to destroy everyone, but... Oh, sure, yeah. But yeah. But also on the note of monthly content, take notes, Avengers. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. I can't believe I was so surprised that they were still doing stuff this year when I found out they're like the Avengers is not dead. We still have content planned for twenty twenty two. It's like, oh really? Okay. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. Yes. I think everyone's <laughs> so intrigued. It could be that. worse, Halo Infinite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> true. True. Guys, this one got me super stoked. Uh, Fallout New Vegas 2 is reportedly in very early talks at Microsoft. Uh, yes, please. I think <laughs> everyone in their, everyone who loved the original was like super stoked when Microsoft bought Bethesda because they're like, Microsoft owns Obsidian and Bethesda, the people who created freaking Fallout New Vegas. So like, this would be absolutely incredible if we could put this together. Like, guys what is obsidian like obsidian's making like 12 games right now i feel like what what is it we're on right now 
uh so grounded yeah. uh avowed yeah. that comes out this because i think grounded is this year right grounded no. yeah, 1.0 no. right? well it's 1.0 oh. it yeah, already came out uh, yeah it's, oh it's in beta i think daniel's saying yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah, that's okay. what i thought yeah yeah never okay. mind <laughs> so you have grounded avowed and then outer worlds 2 which is very similar yes. in the style of fallout so yes yeah a lot of a lot of games but I mean, new vegas 2 sounds amazing I never played New Vegas, but I, I know I know it's a beloved game. Yeah, like I'm up, the up there as much as beloved as like Fallout Three. It's be- like some, if not better. Yeah, many people look back on New Vegas as being better because like they made a lot of improvements to like, especially mm-hmm. the like, gunplay. Like you could modify your weapons and stuff. It was you should play that game, Christian and Ro, <laughs> both of you. It's on. Uh, I mean, I assume, I'm assuming it's on Xbox, but is it on Steam too? Yes. Yes, New Vegas, yep. Nice. I have more thoughts on this, but with your later questions, I'm saving it for then. Okay, okay. So, guys, that leads me into, what is the number one thing that you guys want to see from Xbox going forward? Like, whether it be a game you want to see, a policy you want to see changed, a structural change like within Microsoft, uh, workplace improvement. What Ooh. what of these things like would you want to see? Uh, I'll I'll start while I let you guys kind of simmer on this. My my big thing, and I did talk to Gage a little bit about this as well. Like I think one of the one of the issues with Halo Infinite also, and many of Microsoft's first parties, is the uh, the mandate that Microsoft has for contract work. Uh, they have probably the most contract work that any publisher demands in the entire industry. I would, I would suspect I don't, that's not a fact or anything. I just, you know, said that, but they, they require heavy, heavy, like handed work from contractors. And in my opinion, like that, that dissuades the game from being good because you're, you're hiring a contractor on for, you know, six months or whatever at the end of that six months you got to find someone else to come in and continue that work so you're kind of displacing like what they're working on so i think that's probably one of the big things that i would like to see from them uh ro what would what would you like to see um there's a there's a couple of well the one thing that i would like to see is maybe not even xbox related and has more to do with the other companies playing nice but i would love to see game pass on other places i know steam is is all for it um playstation obviously probably not as gung-ho <laughs> about the idea <laughs> but i would love to see it like on on switch on i guess that's the only other place that it could could go because it's on pc um but yeah I, i'd love to see it in more places than than pc i think it would re- be really cool to be able to play uh the catalog of games on the go uh with my switch and of course that'll be possible with the steam deck if it does come to steam so that'll be really awesome to to have that um in terms of games i would love to see i love to see them be able to i know dan you may feel differently or maybe maybe you are of the same mind i would, I would love them to be able to compete with playstation because right now for me it doesn't seem like they they have those hard-hitting first-party games for me personally um so I'd love to see some new IP that can really get me jazzed about wanting to pick up my Xbox controller and play. Obviously, I don't know what that looks like. Um, for me, I really like third-person narrative games. Um, so maybe something like that. I know they have Starfield, which is a first-person game. Halo is first-person. I'm sure they have their their stuff, but I just none of them really... None, nothing really comes to mind when I think of the style of game that I want. I know it's very selfish to for for me to ask for a specific game, no, but um, yeah, I would love to see some third party exclusive, not third party, third person action adventure sort of style game from Xbox to kind of compete with what PlayStation is doing over there. Um, but that's that's kind of it. You know, I'm not a huge Xbox guy, but having Game Pass on the Switch would be awesome. That's my number one thing. Yeah. I have two things, and and the, I'll start with the first, which is like pretty close to what Ro was saying. Um, if you would ask me two years ago, I think I've, I very much would have said like diversity and and what games you're putting out. Which, and lately have they have answered that with you know acquisition, and and this is kind of getting to an earlier point I was trying to get at, which is like 
games are coming, right? Whenever when everyone thinks Xbox, not everyone, but like there are those out there on Twitter, I should say, that say like, oh, Xbox has no games. Like, well, they do, right? Um, and not only do they do, but like they have a, tons of games now, and they're like they're coming, yeah. Like because there, uh, so many of them will like will be in development. They're on, they are in development, and not only are they coming, but if you have Game Pass, like there's a good chance it it will come to Game Pass for you. So like diversity, I think for the most part is checked, right? Uh, for me, it's just a matter of time and a matter of when. Um, so that part is kind of taken care of. The other thing, and this is kind of like a smaller thing that I think could go a long way. Uh, which was up in conversation today even, is um, some kind of direct style or yes. you know, state of place now for mm. Xbox. Because, uh, uh, like, even if, like, you didn't jive with today's state of play, and even if you don't care for a majority of Nintendo's directs, at the very least there is, like, communication, right? And we can, like, get uh, excited about um, the company that we play on, right? And, like, games that are coming. Because I feel like with Xbox games, for, like, a lot of the time, you know, at an E3 or some kind of other event, we'll have trailers for Xbox games, and then I just won't hear about them at all for a long time until, like, some other kind of major event. And it'd be kind of nice if, you know, Xbox fans could celebrate together with some kind of direct where they can all hop and chat and see what's coming to Xbox soon or get an update on X, Y, or Z game or, you know, whatever. I think that, that could go a long way. Yeah, uh, and I totally forgot about that. I was going to mention that too in our state of play roundup and I forgot. Uh, but yeah, mm-hmm. that's something that I think uh, that was what I was going to say that Sony got some criticism about their state of play, but it's like, I'd rather get that than nothing. Like it, it's cool right. to see these updates on, you know, the smaller yeah. stuff as well. So yeah, you're totally right, Christian. Uh, um, this is kind of a, a, a silly one, but I, I, I remember when we were talking about Xbox for some for some thing. I don't remember what it was. I think it was predictions for E3 or Game Awards or something like that. And I and I jokingly said I want them to bring back Scalebound. I think it was because Platinum had like a bunch of oh. teases, and they still haven't re- revealed all their teases yet on their five things that they want to announce. And recently, the rumors have started again that Platinum would be okay with re, re- uh, restarting uh, Scalebound. So. That's a silly one, but something that I definitely would want is for <laughs> Scalebound to be reignited and come to Xbox. That would be awesome. Probably never going to happen, but I love that. And for like the diversity, like you're saying, Christian, like the diversity would lend right into what you were talking about, Ro, where you're looking for more third person action adventure type experiences, which that is like probably the weakest point that Microsoft has in their portfolio right now. Uh, oh, Blade is it, coming. True. Oh, yeah. Very That's true. true. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, that's super interesting, but talking about the games we're getting this year, uh, from Xbox, I think it's even more interesting because essentially this is as of right now, this is essentially the, uh, Bethesda year because we're getting, well, supposedly getting Starfield and Redfall both this year. Um, obviously unless those get delayed, but it's important that they made that acquisition now because other than those two, maybe we're getting forts of this fall. Uh, Stalker two was supposed to come out this year. It recently got delayed to December, but now it's probably going to be delayed much further because of the Ukrainian war with Russia. So yeah, it's a little, it's, it's tricky. So like what, what, what other games are we getting this year? (laughs) Yeah, there'll be, there'll be smaller games. The big ones are obviously the, the pull, right? And it's going to be tricky because Motorsport, we know people love Forza, right? Yeah. But I think it doesn't have the same amount of draw or appeal as, uh, you know, Forza Horizon. Agreed. As much as Motorsport does get, like, critically praised because it deserves it because, like, Motorsport rocks. Um, Starfield is obviously one that we're, like, super anticipating, but the big question here is whether or not it actually comes out this year. We, like, we just don't know. It's up there with, like, does God of War come out this year? Does Breath of the Wild make it? Starfield, I think, is... You know, because that, that game is going to be huge. Like, I, I almost, like, doubt it that it when, when, it, when it was given a date, right? Uh, and then Redfall, just, we know we, we, know we like, um, oh, who's the developer? Arcane. Arcane, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I think some people, are, including me, might be a little bit skeptical about how, how it'll play as, like, a, a co-op experience. And so, a lot of, like, three, just three big question marks, even though they're, like, might be three great games. It's just, like, do they hit this year? I don't know. Yeah. The uh and as as I was saying earlier with the 
the types of games that I want to play. Um, not sure if any of these are for me, but there are some Xbox games that are like Somerville that was announced mm. earlier this year. They're like that indie sort of game, and I think replace was in there. That it, yeah, that that one I'm definitely hyped for, and replaced as well the pixel ish style, uh, which is also kind of in the sim- similar vein as Somerville. Um, but yeah, so th- there's definitely some some games that I I am tr- interested on for uh, that are coming to Xbox uh, this year. But as you both are saying, what else what else is there? And I'm sure we're going to find out in the summer and later this year what else they may have planned. Um, but it, it does suck that some of these may be delayed into the next year. And it, we only find out what what's going to keep us uh, our appetites, <laughs> quench our appetite later this year. Uh, we only have have to find out later. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you guys are spot on with that. I don't I don't think I have anything to add to that. <laughs> that I completely forgot about Somerville. Uh, that's a really great yeah. great point and replace. Yeah. I'm stoked for that one. Very good. Um, yeah. I didn't have anything else. Uh, did you guys have anything else before we close out the show here? It is not related to Xbox, but it, it, it I did get reminded by the Stalker 2 uh, delay thing uh, because of Ukraine. N- Nintendo delayed uh, Advance Wars because of recent events yes. as well. Advance Wars 2. I should have brought that up when we were talking about this that stuff earlier, but that was something that I forgot to mention, which is, uh, yeah, it's very surprising to me from... to that's coming from Nintendo that they're actually doing something to because of the state of the world. They usually don't right. <laughs> don't really pay attention to that kind of stuff. So that's cool. Good for them. Good, yeah, good on them. Yeah, for real yeah. good on them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, guys, I think that's it. Uh thank you again to everyone joining us live on YouTube, Twitch and Twitter as well as podcast services everywhere including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Stitcher. Thank you, Ro. Thank you, Christian. I am Daniel, and this has been Podcast PXN, and we are out. Much love, and keep on gaming. See ya. All right, see you, Tarnish. Be better. <laughs>